Shalom. I want to start off by giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone who taught me the truth, and salutations to the elect scattered abroad throughout the four corners of the earth. My name is Amor Gabar, back with another lesson, Lord willing to edify and to feed the lambs of Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, through the Holy Spirit, Rakakwadash. Now, um, you know, you see on the screen here, you know, you got Leviathan, the image which, you know, would represent Leviathan. You have some chariots, you know, hovering around the atmosphere, which is a, you know, a prophetic picture because everything you see here is written in prophecies, the chariots, Leviathan. And also, too, if you notice at the bottom, at the bottom, I'm going to zoom in. You got a little submarine over there, which ain't a little submarine. Just a, just a picture comparison as far as Leviathan, the chariots versus Esau and his submarines and his technology, you know. So through the spirit, man, Esau, you know, came out and admitted that, you know, the Pentagon, they admitted that uh, some, you know, some videos that were leaked about the UFOs are real and valid. And, you know, it had me thinking that, you know, Esau might just come out and say that that Leviathan is real or, or what, what he called the Loch Ness Monster. You know, the sea serpent, the sea dragon. You know, he may just come out and say that as real one day, man. You know what I'm saying? Because at the at the rate things are going in 2020, the year of prophecy, prophecies are being revealed left and right. You know? And these are one of the most dreadful creatures that the Heavenly Father have created, Leviathan, man. You know, the sea serpent. You know, one of the most dreadful creatures that the Heavenly Father created. <clears throat> in the book of Job, it tells you about him. And, um, you know, I'm going to make this... You know, pretty much a basic, you know, quick lesson, just touching on Leviathan because, you know, that's one of the most highest creations and, you know, one of his, uh, you know, prized, prized possessions, I should say, you know, besides, of course, man. But, you know, he, he as far as the scripture is concerned, he takes glory in creating Leviathan, you know, but um, let me jump right into it. This is the book of Psalms. Chapter 104, and I'll start at 1. Blessed be the Lord, O my soul. Excuse me. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord, Yahweh Bashem Shai. Thou art very great. Thou art clothed with honor and majesty. Who covers thyself with lights as, the, as with a garment. Who stretches out the heavens like a curtain. Right? Now, that's talking about the heavens. Okay? The, you know what Esau will call space, outer space. He stretched it out like a curtain, meaning it's, meaning it's everlasting. Okay, it's wide, you know, there's no end to the heavens, as the scripture is saying. Verse 3 says, Who layeth the beams of his chariots in the waters, who maketh the clouds his chariots, who walketh upon the wings of the wind, who maketh his angel spirits his minister of flaming fire. All right, so the Heavenly Father, part of his glory is them chariots, okay, because when he come back, he's coming back with his glory, and his glory is his army. All right, and that consists of the chariots, which are his angels, okay, who are um, operating those vehicles, which Esau called the UFOs, okay, and there's always been countless sightings of UFOs throughout history. You know, they made they made um, you know those images, those 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 Renaissance art with um, tr um, chariots or UFOs in them. You know, sailors when they were coming towards the Americas with uh, Israelites slaves in them. And them ships, they seen chariots, you know, they seen chariots, those that sunk, you know, could have been Leviathan who sunk them, you know, but that's all things that we're going to find out more of in the kingdom, all right, so let me jump down to verse 24, it says, O Lord, how manifold are thy works, and wisdom has thou made them all, the earth is full of thy riches, so is the great and wide sea, wherein are creeping things innumerable, both small and great beasts. Now the sea is larger than, is more vast than, than land itself, okay? The earth, if I'm not mistaken, you know, according to Esau and his science would say that, which is obvious, you know, we see it and is, is very believable as, as, as the scripture would say that though there's more water, the earth is, you know, consists of more water, more seas, more ocean than landmass itself all right so within these waters and these seas and the oceans you have creeping things and and creatures and beasts innumerable small and great 
small meaning the most microscopic sea creatures that Esau is discovering, all the way to the, the great beasts that he have yet to see, which one of those beasts are Leviathan. Verse 26 says, There go the ships, there is that Leviathan, whom thou hast made to play therein. All right, so there, there goes the ships, and there is that Leviathan. What ships? I'll give an example, the Titanic. All right, now, I remember, um, you know, we used to talk about this. Well, the apostles and elders used to talk about this back in the day. But, um, you know, it's a, highly, it's a high possibility that that, that that ship was sank by Leviathan because the the, the, um, the captain or the creator of that ship, I'll look it up and um, Lord will not put it in the post-production. But one of their bold statements was that, the you know, his ship, his creation, this vessel is unsinkable and nothing can sink it. Okay, now that's a proud statement to make, man. You know that nothing can sink that ship. Now, you 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 know very well Esau and his craftiness. Esau knew that there would be icebergs in route to where he was going. All right, which I believe he was coming to New York. That ship was coming to New York, if I'm not mistaken. But they knew that there would there that there will be icebergs and there were such things as icebergs and they exist and all of that was kept in mind while building that ship. So I personally, through the spirit, don't believe no iceberg sank the Titanic, man. You know, I believe that it was Leviathan who, 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 as the scriptures say, came and played with that ship, all right, and made it to sink. All right, but that's either here nor there. You know, we'll find out in the kingdom for sure, you know, but I believe that because Esau and his pride, you know, and the Most High put a stop to his pride and his bold, proud statement, okay? So verse 26 says, there goes the ship. There is that Leviathan whom thou has made to play therein. All right. And, you know, to mention that's where they get the con the whole concept of um, Godzilla, you know, um, these different Loch Ness monsters and all these different creations. OK, so this is the book of Nehemiah, chapter nine, verse six. It says, read on, it says, thou, even thou art Lord alone, Yahweh. Thou has made heaven, the heavens of heavens with all their host, the earth and all things that are therein, the seas, and all that is therein, and thou preserveth them all, and the hosts of heaven worshipeth thee. So the Heavenly Father created every single thing that you see, all right, and the things that you don't see, he created. So the hosts of heaven, which are his angels, the chariots, okay, when you see them chariots, those are the angels in them, all right, so the heavens, the angels, you know, they worship the Heavenly Father, <coughs> excuse me. Even the creatures that are upon the uh, upon the face of the sea, they 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 are they are created by the heavenly Father, man. They're subject unto that power, the heavenly Father. Okay, and the heavenly Father is you know through the Spirit, one day will make it manifest where these people are gonna see Leviathan. It's not gonna be a secret no more. All right, so let me go to the to the Leviathan scripture, the Book of Job, chapter forty-one, the whole chapter, and I'm just gonna read through it. It says, Canst thou draw out Leviathan with a hook or his tongue with a cord which thou lettest down? Canst thou put a hook into his nose or bore his jaw with a thorn? Will he make many supplications unto thee? Will he speak soft words unto thee? Will he make a covenant with thee? Will thou take him for a servant forever? Will thou play with him as with a bird? Or will thou bind him with thy maidens? Shall that shall the compassions make a banquet of him? Excuse me. Shall the companions make a banquet of him? Shall they part him among the merchants? These are all rhetorical questions. Okay, these are all rhetorical questions because none of these things that are being asked can happen to Leviathan. So it says, "Canst thou fill his skin with a barbed iron, or his head with fish spears? Lay thine hand upon him. Remember the battle. Do no more." Behold, the hope of him is in vain. Shall not one be cast down even at the sight of him? Because Esau got a got a program. I'm not sure the program name, but where they go deep sea diving. All right. They, they go over there, which according to him, that's the deepest part of earth. I mean, deepest part of the water, depths of the ocean over there in the Mariana Trench, which is over there um, just above Australia. All right. Around that around that region. You got the Mariana Trench, which is a big canyon in the ocean's floor bottom, uh, which goes very deep. And no man have, you know, 
gotten that deep you know and no man can go that deep all right because esau cannot search out the heavens you know or the sea you know he can't he just cannot because the most high said that he cannot do it you know so it says reading on none is so fierce that that dare stir him up who then is able to stand before him who have prevented me now you know it made me think verse 10 none is so fierce that dare stir him up who then is able to stand before me now remember the scripture said the earth shall reel to and fro now there's going to be a lot of quaking going on on this earth that the actual earth itself all right so when you got these submarines these nuclear submarines in these oceans and then you know th then they shoot missiles at america and then america shoot missiles at different places it's gonna it's gonna shake the earth to and fro man and it's gonna wake up that beast leviathan man he gonna you know i believe he might come up and just you know who the hell woke me up and start, you know, biting and, and biting them submarines like I like I made in that picture right there. And um and ma manifest himself, man. You know, it's all it's all possible because these are the Heavenly Father's creation, and he's gonna make it be make it be known on this earth. So it says, Who hath prevented me that I should repay him? Whatsoever is under the whole heaven is mine. Yahweh Bashim Yahshua is his. Everything under heaven is the Lord's. I would not conceal his parts nor his power nor his comely proportion. Who can discover the face of his garments or who can come to him with his double brittle? Who can open the doors of his face? His teeth are terrible round about, man. And this is the Heavenly Father describing Leviathan, man. If the Heavenly Father is talking, if the Heavenly Father is saying Leviathan's countenance is terrible and that's the Heavenly Father who created him, how much more can our understanding and interpretation and perception of what Leviathan may look like, man? You know, it's terrible. Just know that. It says his scales are his pride shut up together as with a uh, closed seal. All right. Yeah, man, that's that's heavy. You know, his scales are impenetrable. It says one is so near to another that no air can come between them, which is why he's able to be down so deep in the ocean, because he cannot be compressed with the pressure of the ocean bottom, you know, like a submarine can or or anything that goes through deep start to crack and the pressure start to crumble it that's not not leviathan man the most high is perfect in all his creations it says by his by his niecing a light do shine and his eyes are like the eyelids of the morning that's how bright his eyelids are man when he opens his eyes that's how bright and big they are okay out of his mouth go burning lamps as sparks of fire leap out that's fire all right, that's fire. Okay, so he he can breathe fire, or spit fire, if you may. All right, out of his nostrils goeth smoke. Out as excuse me, out of his nostril goeth smoke, as out of a seething pot or cauldron. Okay, so he blow that smoke out of his nose and that fire out of his mouth. That's that's a sea serpent, that sea dragon, man. <clears throat> you know. His breath kindleth coals. And the flame goeth out of his mouth. Fire, fire breathing dragon on the water at that. It's the most high's creation, man. You know, and you got a lot of um in in um ancient time, these Vikings and and these uh sailors and so on and so forth used to make images of um these the, this type of creature, these dragon type creatures. That's because they they seen a Leviathan, all right? And I say a Leviathan because the most high always made more than just one. You know, when it comes to creatures and creation, he always made more than just one in abundance for population. So there's there's a lot of Leviathans down there. You know, and their lifespan is is is, is a lot longer than ours. You know. <clears throat> so it says, in his neck remaineth strength, and sorrows turned into joy before him. Excuse me, let me read that again. <clears throat> in his neck remaineth strength, and sorrow is turned into joy before him. The flakes of his teeth of his flesh are joined together they are firm in themselves they cannot be moved his heart is as firm as a stone yet as hard as a piece of nether millstone when he raiseth up himself the mighty are afraid by reason of breaking they purify themselves because at one point you know for the scripture to say this at one point there were encounters of the sea serpent leviathan you know else the scripture wouldn't say it you know, these sailors who traveled the seas, they seen it, you know, they seen it and they were afraid. 
It says, The sword of him that layeth at him cannot hold the spear, the dart, nor the, the habergeon. Haber, haber, he esteemeth iron as a straw, and brass as rotten wood. So iron and straw, which like I mentioned earlier, the Titanic was made out of iron, steel. Okay, how does how does he treat iron and steel? As the scriptures say, he esteemeth iron like a straw. So it would be nothing for Leviathan to 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 bite, scratch, scrape, or even touch a ship and put a hole or dent inside of it, man. You know? Just as easy as you break a straw like like cows and and, and um horses eat straw. Okay? Just as easy as you can bend that. Leviathan can bend iron. It says the arrow cannot make him flee. Sling stones are turned with him into stubble. So he's not going to be afraid. All right. He's not going to be afraid. He's not going to run, you know, or even be destroyed when these missiles are shot. You know, he's not going to run for his life. Okay. He's the scripture say the arrow should not make him flee. He's not afraid of that. Matter of fact, I believe there's somewhere in the scripture where it says that, that nothing can fit him or something like that along that line, man. But. He's not afraid of nothing. He's not afraid of nothing. Okay? It says the arrow cannot make him flee. Sling stones are turned with him into stubble. Darts are counted as stubble. He laugheth at the shaking of a spear. Sharp stones are under him. He spreadeth sharp pointing things upon the mire. He maketh the deep to boil like a pot. He maketh the sea like a pot of ointment. So where he dwelling at is hot. The deepest depth of the ocean, wherever he dwells, is very, very hot. He maketh a path to shine before him. One would think the deep to be hoary. All right. He maketh a path to shine before him. Hey, you know, because like Esau show you in these, these, uh, these, these videos, these Discovery National Geographics and all that. You got certain animals down there. Certain creatures of lesser magnitude compared, way lesser magnitude compared to Leviathan. Who have uh, the ability to shine a light before them. Okay. Now the scriptures say his eyes are like the, the sun You know So think about that It says upon the earth there is not his like Who is made without fear That's the scripture I was talking about He he doesn't fear nothing He's made without fear So the missile is not going to make him flee That's what I was. That's the scripture right there The, the verse I should say Upon the earth there is, there is not his like So there is no creature on this earth that is like Leviathan Alright And who is made without fear No fear period it says, he beholdeth all high things. He is a king over all the children of pride. Who's the children of pride? Esau, man. All right, anybody, you think you pride? Well, guess what? Leviathan is king over you. All right? Why? Because he he's a proud creation that the Heavenly Father created, man. That's why going back to that whole Titanic thing, you know what I'm saying? Um, The ship master or the creator or the, or the engineer, whoever it was, that said that... um. That nothing can sink the Titanic. Well, there you go. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, that's like I said, that's where you get the concept of Godzilla's and and all these these different creatures. You know, hey, you saw me just come out upright and say that that the Loch Ness Monster, Leviathan, the Sea Serpent, Godzilla type creatures are, are real. You know, just like how he admitted that, you know, the so-called UFOs are real. The chariots of the Heavenly Fathers are real. You know, hey, and yeah, 2020, man. The Most High is going to manifest all things that are written in prophecy, man, through the Holy Spirit. The year 2020, the year of prophecy. And we just watching prophecies unfold, brothers. You know, just, hey, this is the Most High program. Just, you know, have faith. Do the work. Give diligence to make your calling and your election sure. I'm telling myself this as well, first and foremost. And just keep pushing, man. So with that, I hope this was edifying. Till next time, I say shalom.